Welcome, Christian, to Metalarium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Sorcerer, this new album, Raid of the Reaper, and more cheese related in general, the Metal War. So we're starting with a common question. So how has band been the band during the last three years? Because your, your last album, Lamenting of the Innocent, uh, was released in 2020 when the pandemic was started. And now we are use we are second album before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I mean um, after sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah the pandemic that, that was a weird thing. Uh, so now, yeah, you know, it's um, <laughs> finally we can start to go out and touring again and start working again. You know, uh, so we're we're very uh, very happy to uh, <laughs> finally get rid of that. Uh, yeah, the pandemic thing. Mm. Okay, well, I I saw what I'm not, not the last album 2020 was released during the pandemic. So obviously yeah. this album didn't have a prop uh, a proper promotion because all usually no. in US or Europe, yes, when you release an album, go on tour, videos, and and, and lots of things. So now yeah. you have a new album. You know you know new album. So how will we focus the new set list for the in upcoming presentation of Sorcerer? You will focus on both albums, or perhaps you will focus more on this new one. Yeah, well, I mean, we did do some touring. We didn't we didn't tour right after Lamenting was released, but we toured last year. We did. I mean, touring is a bit much. We we played a bunch of festivals, uh, and we played uh, I think four four songs from Lamenting, four or five songs from Lamenting, um, because it was a new the new album. But this time we're not gonna do that. Of course, we're gonna play more songs from the new album, "Rain of the Reaper." But uh, we're, we're still gonna play some lamenting songs. You know, we try to mix it up a little bit, and we're gonna play some old stuff, uh, and we're gonna play some songs we never played before. You know, we 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 try to for every touring cycle we try to do something different. You know, bring some new songs in or some take up some old favorites. You know, so this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be yeah. I think anybody has. Who has seen us is going to be happy with uh, what we bring out this time. Okay, well, Sorcerer is a band that born that was born in 1980, so at the end of the 80s. But now you, the, but the band starts again the career in 2010. So when you started, when you entered to the band was in 2000, you in 2010. So when the band completely have a full, a full lineup, presentations, etc. Again, so why? Who came with the idea? To reborn sorcerer uh, with us, especially to full an eye presentation, and obviously the the first the, the first album, the Shadow of the Inverted Cross, because that album was released in two thousand fifteen. Yeah, yeah. The idea with reforming sorcerer was actually Oliver, uh, who runs the Hammer of Doom festival in Germany, in Würzburg, Germany. He called uh, Johnny Hagel, who was uh, one of the founding members. He called Johnny and said, like, Hey, you want to? You know, you want to reform Sorcerer and do a gig. And uh, Johnny was like, hmm, let me think about that. And then he called Anders, our, the singer. And uh, Anders was like, hell no, that's a bad idea. Let's not do that. And he hung up the phone. And then uh, I guess, you know, he thought about it for five minutes and called him back like, yeah, OK, maybe we should do it. You know, it, should, it would be fun. <laughs> uh, but they they couldn't uh, really find the old musicians, you know, the, the old guys in the who was in the band back then. So, um, and I knew Anders and I knew Johnny uh, from uh, my Therion days. So they, they asked me, hey, do you, wanna, do you wanna play? And I was like, yeah, of course. And then I got another guitar player, Ola England, very famous guy now, YouTuber, plays with The Haunted. Uh, and we got another, uh, another drummer. And then we did the, the show Hammer of Doom in 2010. And that was the first sorcery show since, I guess, you know, the, the 90s, the early 90s. Um, and then, yeah, we, we, we did another show and the, the audience response was so great. So we just felt like, hey, maybe, you know, maybe we should try to make an album. Just see for fun, you know, see what happens. And so we made one and then we shopped it around to different labels and Metal Blade were one of the interested ones. You know, they wanted to sign us and we were really happy about that because that was really the label we wanted to sign with in the first place. So yeah, and then we just continued on from there. Oh, nice. Well, yeah, well, yeah. So now, for, well, well, you know the band as I I think since the eight, uh, since the late eighties. 
But now, what is your, what is your point of view when you are in band now and um, before you entered to the band in 2010? Because but what the band was well, as you as you mentioned, you call all, all persons, all all line up, and now the band I think has a new sound because I try to compare the old sound from the band and now you have a new sound. So how do you see this as the the complete change of the sound of the sorcerer? It's just a natural process. I mean, uh, like you said, I was not in the band then. The only guy in the band right now who was in the band back then was Anders. So, I mean, his voice is still the signature sound of Sorcerer. You know, take away Anders and, you know, we're going to, Sorcerer's not going to be there anymore. But since he's there, the rest of us can bring in our influences. And I mean, I listen to the old stuff that I've always listened to, but I also listen to a lot of new music. You know, I try to find new stuff. Uh, you know, as much as I can. And uh, and then we just write together, you know, we, I write and Peter writes and Johnny writes. Johnny is still associated with Sorcerer and we put the ideas together. Um, and it just becomes, it's a natural process, nothing weird. We just write and this is what comes out, you know. And we, I, I think the first album in, in The Shadow of the Immortal Cross was more of a, we wrote it for us, but we also wrote it for the old fans. Who liked the old Sorcerer because you know we had Sorcerer hadn't really made an album then it was demos, yeah. so when we did Inverted Cross it was sort of like yeah let's let's try to make something that the old fans would will appreciate as well as us, but then when we recorded the next album which was Fire King, it was like okay let's bring Sorcerer into the new millennium so to speak and and what would Sorcerer sound today, sound like today you know and then we just, we've just continued on from there. Yeah, well, yeah, that is true because well, now yeah. the sound of the band is very, very, <clears throat> very dedicated to epic doom metal. So, with this aspect, are you agree with the label epic doom metal? Um, I don't think we are we are not doom metal anymore. I mean, maybe Sorcerer was that in the beginning, in the old old days, very influenced by you know Candlemass and Sabbath, but today. I think we're more just like a metal band, you know. I mean, I, I don't, I don't really hear any much doom, uh, like influ I mean, I have the influences in some parts, of course. I mean, I'm always going to love Sabbath and Candlemass and all those bands, but especially now with the new album, I, you know, it's more up tempo. I would say it's just metal, like heavy metal, you know. Influences from Maiden and Priest and whatever, you know, Metallica maybe and some newer stuff, or, or you know, it's. It's 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 everything. It's it, I would not call it uh, epic doom. Mm, but yeah, you, you have more more details, more textures. That is not for me. It's not to uh, epic doom or I don't. No. Yeah. So well, when I think of epic doom, you know, if, we, if I think epic doom, it's Candlemas, you know, and it's like Solitude Eternus. Yeah. You yeah. know, maybe maybe yeah, Atlantic Codex travel, or something. Pentagram. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I I don't think we sound like those guys. I mean, maybe in the beginning, but not now. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So talking about now of, of the one of the difference from the last album to this new one. So for you, what is the biggest difference that exists compared to the bueno to the element of innocent compared to this to this new one? The biggest difference I would say is the tempos are a bit higher. There are a bit more faster songs on it, mm -hmm. more more metal songs, <laughs> like up tempo. Um, and then it's also shorter. You know, it's only it's only like forty five minutes. It can it fits on a one vinyl album. The last one was uh, sixty three minutes, so it's almost twenty minutes longer. I think that was a bit too long, if I have to be honest. I think we could have cut that down, maybe two songs or something. So I think this is more focused effort, and uh, yeah, like I said, more 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 metal, straight ahead metal influences this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, one since. Since you since well since you start the career well, again from the saucers, you enter to the to the to you you enter to the one to the to the main stuff with metal metal blade records is the in the shadow of inverter cross. Obviously, this metal record metal blade record things of the past of the band years etc. It's normally for a for a label things about these kind of aspects. But now over the years since 2010 now 2023 the band is, is now 13 years with the label. Now, oh, no, yeah, thirteen years with the label. So the 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 the, the things are still gonna like like a Frank's, like a comrades in this aspect with the label, or perhaps at this moment you just have a connection with the label 
just a business part? Well, uh, it's not really 13 years to be uh, to be just uh, correct you there. The, we signed with with Metal Blade, I think, in 2014, maybe. Well, and then the year. album came out in 15. So it's like, yeah, it's like 10 years or yeah. something like that. Or yeah, uh, or yeah. But uh, we have a great relationship with Metal Blade. Um, we, we signed the first deal was three albums, which we, uh, you know, we fulfilled that with the Lamenti. And then we signed a new deal for another three albums. And this uh, Reign of the Reaper is the first one of those. So we, we have a great relationship with, with Metal Blade. I've, I've said that in every interview. I, I, you know, I, I couldn't think of a better label for us because, I mean, they're such cool people. They let us do whatever we do. And they, they never say like, hey, maybe you should try this. Maybe you should try that. It's like, you know, they leave us alone. We, we bring in the record. They usually like it. We're happy about that and lucky that they do. They never said like, oh, this is, this is weird. What, what are you doing? You know, they just go like, oh, that's cool. Great. You know, and then they release it, you know, and, and that's as, a, as an artist, that really, that's really all you can, all you can ask for, you know, that's the best situation to be in. Great, great. And one, obviously the band is still growing with the, well, with the new albums, with new presentations, gigs, etc, etc. And you told me a few seconds that when you are completely uh, agree with working with Metal Blade, but with this aspect of the, the the band growing, perhaps did you think to sign with another label in the future? I don't know. We we've never thought about it. You know, we, we got offered this, the second deal with Metal Blade, and it was a no brainer for us to sign. We never looked around at anybody else. You know, we were like we were happy with Metal Blade, and I mean, who knows? I mean. I, I don't see it in the future that that someone is gonna you know come and offer us like here's like a million dollars if you sign with the Universal or Sony. <laughs> I, I don't think that's that's not gonna happen. So if we if we stay with Metal Blade for the rest of our career, I will be totally happy with that. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, now as 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 you can see, as you can see, the world is now providing a lot of music into the music industry, especially for the digital platform, singles, albums, EPs, I don't know, a lot more. So what's your point of view now about the music industry in these days? Even your your ex comrade Ola England is is producing singles, YouTube channels, music, much more music. So what's your opinion about now? The music uh, has a, a different a, a different point of view compared to the eighties or nineties. It's not like that. So how what is your opinion about this? I think saturated world music. Yeah, it's it's a it's quite a difficult situation actually. I mean, it's it's not easy to. I mean, we're not making any money at all. Um, so it, it's just for us, it's a labor of love. You know, we that's that's why we do it. We love playing together. We love playing this kind of music. And um, yeah, that's that's all there is. I mean, everybody uh, in the band has got different jobs. You know, day jobs. Um, so yeah, it, it it's just. We just do it because it's fun. It's it's nothing like, I mean, of course we wish we could we could make you know <laughs> make this our our job. That would be awesome. You know, make tons of money. But you know, I think the we're we're too small a band, and you know, there's like I said, it's, the market is saturated. There's so many bands, so many yeah. good bands. Uh, so we're, I mean, I would be lying if I said we we didn't want to grow and and you know expand our audience. Of course we do, but uh, I, yeah, I don't know. It's it's difficult. I don't I don't I don't really see that happening. Actually, I I think we we sort of in the same. We're gonna be I think in this spot where we are now. You know, we do some festivals and do stuff. I mean, if we were twenty twenty five maybe and without families and stuff, we could probably maybe go out on tour like tour so much like all those bands did like in the you know 80s and 90s like in flames and soil work and uh, all those bands you know opeth whatever they were young and they just toured relentlessly and built up an audience but mm. uh we've never done that you know we 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 didn't do that and and since we you know reformed in 2010 it's just been mostly festivals and that that's fine when we we couldn't have done it in other, any other way. So because the sorcerer wasn't together in the nineties and you know the yeah. in the two thousands. So yeah, there wasn't any opportunity to do to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, now as, as well, now we are very close to this interview, Christian. And for okay. this aspect, 
What kind of plans do you have for this reign of Reaper? Perhaps you will embark tours, festivals, but are you now preparing a new album? Perhaps again, you are perhaps still songs that you will be releasing an EP. Who knows? Or perhaps you will embark on a Latin American tour. Who knows? Yes, I mean the, the the idea is to to tour and do shows. Um, we're gonna do our first gig now is in November in the seventeenth in actually the same place where Sorcerer was born in uh, you know in the, the Hammer of Doom festival in Würzburg. Uh, we're gonna headline that one, and this is the fourth time we play there, and we're really honored to be able to headline that show now. Uh, and then next year we're gonna try to get as many gigs as possible. We got we got some stuff coming up. Uh, hopefully some more festivals uh, and maybe a, a proper tour. And if we come to Latin America, I mean, I would love to. I've been there many times, many times with the Therion. And uh, it's always been amazing and some of the best times of my life, you know. So I would love to come back. And I know everybody in Sorcery feels the same way. Because, I mean, the, yeah, it's fantastic. You know, it's, it's, I have so many great memories, you know, from touring there so yeah I, I hope we can we can make it over there okay well you told me as you told me more than more than one time that it, that the band that, that the band is more like a small a small fish in a in a in a big <laughs> with metal blade because metal blade has cannibal corps and cattle cartation big bands into the extreme metal war but I usually a fan thinks differently because when a fan see the label the that sorcerer is in metal blade records they think that the now sorcerer is a mainstream band but you told me that you are a small fish fan. So that's a curious, the mind is very tricky sometimes for the fans. So mm -hmm. what are, you, are you still considered like an underground band with Sorcerer because you are I know, with a big leaks with the Metal Blade Records? Or perhaps perhaps you has a different point of view of how how you label this mainstream source or Sorcerer or main underground Sorcerer? I, w I would say personally, I think Source is an underground band, uh, definitely. I mean, we're we're not really noticed by by anybody in the big leagues. I mean, the big leagues for me, I mean, it's like you know Maiden and and yeah. that that's the big leagues. Then they have the maybe lower than that. I mean, I guess like maybe you know Nightwish and Therion and uh, In Flames, that that kind of level, which is still extremely respectable level, you know, to be at. And we're we're a couple of notches below that for sure, because I mean those guys can they can make a living playing their music, and we cannot do that. So, and that that comes back to what I said, you know, they they built their whole career from touring, 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 and releasing you know great albums like all the time, and then they have an audience, and if they release an album, they have I don't know, maybe you know thousand people will come and see every show or 500 or whatever but with sorcerer it's not like that you know we're if we play somewhere maybe we get 100 people maybe 200 if we're lucky maybe you know even 250 if we're really lucky if it's, it's some place where we we haven't been or whatever but it's not like we have a a, a, a steady core audience we don't have that because we've never really proved ourselves live you know we, we played mainly festivals and that's, I, I think we have to make peace with that, you know, that we're always going to be a, a small, small fish, you know, mm -hmm. unless, you know, we, we write a song which, you know, Enter Sandman Part 2, like, <laughs> rose up and <laughs> yeah, I don't see yeah, that happening, yeah. but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, that is true. Well, when this aspect that you mentioned, when Iron Maid and Black Sabbath are the big bands in the metal yeah. world, so now... They, but they, 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 these kind of bands are still filled in stadiums, fill, well, whatever, whatever stadiums, etc. No? So, but yeah. now with the, with the, with this new generation that are that are using the music as a background in their lives, I mention, I mentioned this because as you can see now, the, thanks for the social media, especially with the, uh, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram trends, you can see just the music as a background of their lives, the, doing. Silly things, stupid things in the social media. It's very, very annoying sometimes for me too, and for for me too. So, we, so where the uh, for you where the art uh, enters uh, or the entertainment enter in this aspect when the music for when the music or people consuming less or or nothing physical material at uh, at the end and the music is just taken for doing the stuff 
during the day, like the go to the bed, wash the car, as a background of their lives. It's not like, like me, when I hear for the first time and an album from Autopsy, I hear for 20 times just hearing the album. Now it's very different. You are cooking and the people are listening, run to the hills that are, they are cooking. So they're not paying attention to the music, just a background. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, it's different for sure. Exactly like you said, you know, it's more of a, it can be a background thing, but I mean, I just, I don't really think about that that much. I mean, I, I can't make people, you know, I, I can't influence what they do when they listen to music, you know. I just know for myself when I when I discover a new band or something, I'm I am exactly the same way I was when I was 15. You know, it's like shit. And I, of course, I'm on Spotify now and, you know, it's, it's very convenient to have like a whole record collection in your phone. But I, I'm the same thing. Headphones on, you know, just out walking or going to work, whatever, just listening to the same album, maybe, like you said, 20 times. Just, oh, shit, this is so cool, you know. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, I also listen to music when I cook and it, it's yeah, that's the way it is, you know, but what, as for me as an artist or a performer, I don't, I don't really, it, it doesn't enter into my, my mind that way. You know, I just, when we write and when we play our music, you know, we, we do it because we love it. And then how people consume music, I guess, you know, that's, that's their business. They can do whatever they want. That's fine with me, you know? Okay. Okay. Well, now one of the last questions, as you can see, one and you mentioned too. Now the albums is that I, I think the albums will disappear in a few years more, perhaps ten years. Who knows? Because now we are returning time. We are we are returning on time when just the people at at the forties or fifties spread the music just by singles and hear it by by singles at that time. And no, like now now we are returning to this one well, to this wave of to hear just singles. And the album mm. is completely disappearing about the one, especially for the playlist, Spotify, this kind of, they produce this kind of aspect. Yeah. So for you, how how will be the effect for the bands that are still create albums, but the people are asking just by singles? Mm, I don't know. I, I think maybe, I guess in one way, we're lucky that we're, we're, in, we're in the metal community because I, everybody I know and, and me myself uh, for me personally i i love hearing the whole album i mean sure the single is important but i want to hear every song i want to hear the the eight songs or the 10 songs you know i want to hear the whole complete picture um and as far as people consuming again how how they listen and how they consume yeah i mean if if metal blade would tell us to go like hey you know we're not going to make any albums anymore you have to just make five singles and that would be that'd be that'd be fine i mean i guess we're going to do that but still um i i like to hear an album i want to hear the whole story i want to hear you know not just one song if if you know whatever some band i i like comes out with an album i, I want to hear the whole thing you know because probably it's going to be good if if it's one of my favorite bands you know i want to hear everything uh, i think this whole like yeah, focus on the snippets and the small chunks, you know, like a uh, 10 second teaser here and, you know, 30 second thing over there. It's like, it's just, I don't know, it's it's annoying. And it's like the thing with your phone, you know, you're like, you know, searching on your phone and then turning it off and watching a movie for five minutes and then uh, turning that off and listening to a song and then reading a book. It's like, people are so like, scattered in their brain i mean i'm the same way I, I can totally understand you know but i i want to I, I hope people can get back to the whole be like okay turn off your phone turn off your computer sit somewhere and listen to your album you know do the whole thing give the artist a chance you know mm, yeah well, that is that is true. well christian the sad times arrive at this interview i hope you enjoyed this one like me uh, but terrific guy, love to this new record. Congratulations on it. And perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalino followers? Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for your support. I, uh, you know, as I've said before, we could never ever do this without, you know, you guys. If, if no one cared, then we wouldn't be doing this. So I'm really happy about that. And I hope we can make it to Latin America.
in all this tour. That would be fantastic.